Everybody got guilty pleasures. Mine just tend to catch me cases. Handcuffs, police inspections, lawyers, judges, allegations. Turn on your favorite station. You hear the same old song. I feel like dog. I'm about to drop the bomb. Blow one down, pass it around. Hey, what with me now? We running wild. Hey, and nobody can. We on the town. Hey, never come down. I never come down. Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Here we've got a couple of big targets who will try to be key contributors in both the pass and run games today. It's the Jaguars going up against the Seahawks. And with that, we'll send you up to the Pacific Northwest and Central Infield in Seattle, home of the Twins. We'll welcome in our broadcast team of Brent Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you very much, Larry. While the skies may be ominous, there's never a bad day for football. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Seattle Seahawks. Hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, we saw Larry focus on the tight end matchup. It is open. You think it's one to watch, don't you? Definitely one to watch because these guys can create such big plays by all the different things they can do. Line up out wide in the slot, line up in a normal tight end position, and then who are you going to cover them with? Is it a linebacker, a defensive back? They create mismatches all throughout the game. On the return, this is Denard Robinson. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. And Charles, here comes the Jags offense and Blake Bortles. And let's face it, Jaguars fans are really excited about this season and really excited about the development of Blake Bortles. He continues to get better and better when we watch him play. Yeah, and they want faster starts. Last year, first quarter, the Jags averages 2.19 points, converted only 34% of their third downs. So what you're telling me is they want a lot of those big plays that they create to count for something and not just make the scoreboard look better. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. And the box that's highlighted is for Hearns on this offense. Do you have your track shoes available? Because Alan Hearns is a guy that gets you on your horse if you're trying to defend him. He can take anyone deep and win on any route. Jet running back. This is Chris Ivory. And he's got Rome. And he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And a nice run for the former undrafted free agent back in 2010, Chris Ivory. And I think that's why we see the greatness in him. It was there. Just because he wasn't drafted didn't mean he wasn't a good player. But I think he uses that as fuel. Each and every run, an aggressive, strong run, catches out of the backfield. He's turned himself into a complete player. So here we go, first and ten now. They stay on the ground, Ivory again. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Brandon, that play ended so fast, it's almost as if the quarterback handed it to the runner, and the tackle was there right away for a loss of yardage. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Bortles to throw on second down. And this is incomplete. He was looking for Chris Ivory that time. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. 
And a look at Seattle's defense. When you say the name Richard Sherman, you get a wide variety of reactions. All I know is that when I watch him play, very few false steps, an excellent understanding of what offenses are trying to do. We've got a third and 11. Bortles on third down. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. It's a gain of seven, and that's going to make it fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies unable to get it done. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. They're led onto the field by their quarterback, a man who's made quite the name for himself in the NFL, and that's Russell Wilson. And when I think of Russell Wilson, I think not just of the big plays that he's made, and those are considerable, but when they were made. Fourth and 26 in a Big Ten championship game against Michigan State when he was with Wisconsin. A big completion helped lead his team to a victory. A big fourth down throw for a touchdown in an NFC championship game against the San Francisco 49ers. When the chips are down, this guy plays at a big level. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. and 10. It's Wilson. This complete to Lockett. And he's brought down after a good game. Give him 27 yards that time. And it'll give the Seahawks a first down. And a nice pitch and catch to pick up the reception against man coverage. Both of them read how much yardage they needed, figured what they had to do, and were able to beat the man coverage for the completion. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first down, Wilson. And a diving grab. I think he got that. Yes. 20 yards on the pickup there. And the Seahawks are going to have a first and goal. I'd have to say that whenever you see a good post route run, they do not like to let it end without the catch. Hence, that great diving play. Yeah, lay it up there, let him go get it, and he got it. Here's Thomas Rawls with his first carry. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Give him four on the carry there at second and goal. The wide receivers, often a very, very talented group, and that's the case here. And they don't mind showcasing it either. Those guys love to be flashy, love to make big plays out in the open field. They will attempt to do so in this game. Second and goal from the two-yard line. Again, it's Rawls. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that. The and he takes it into the end zone across the chalk. Now, there is a flag down, but I think that's offsides on the defense. Yeah, I think that's going to stand, partner. Stephen Hauschka for the point after. And this will give the Seahawks a 7 to nothing lead. Get out to send this one away following the score. 
This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out. Give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time definitely to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. Caught out left side by Robinson. Give him three on the play, and that'll make this a second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after cash, but it worked really well. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Now Bortles throwing on second down. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. And the offense needs seven out of this play on third down. On play action, it's Bortles. He's got the hook up to Lee. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. And that's one of his advantages of a passer is now with his height setting back there in the pocket, firing over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Again they run. Again it's Ivory. They lost two there. And it's third down. I would not want to be an offensive lineman in today's NFL, especially not a center or a guard if you got to deal with these massive defensive tackles who could not just beat you with strength, but they can beat you with quickness and guile as well. They can get upfield and make plays. And a lot of times what they're taught, just go ahead and tackle everyone that comes in your area and keep the run of the ball. Play action. Now it's Bortles. He's going to float this one deep right side. Trying to get it to Robinson, and it's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowl quarterback, Richard Sherman. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So possession changes hands on the final play of the first quarter. 7-0 is our score. We'll be back to Seattle right after this. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. They've got it first and ten inside their own 20-yard line. After the interception, here's Wilson. It's caught. Lock it. Tyler Lock it. The third. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Tyler Lockett, 82 yards. And the Seahawks get the quick strike touchdown. And Charles, I had an offensive coordinator tell me one time that they designed every play to score. I don't know how true that is, but he had to run a long way after that catch. Heck of a play. I think that when he was telling you that, he was designing run after catch in every play. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the only way to put it in there, and that's what we got on that one. Nice catch, an even better run for big yardage. Hauschka now for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14 nothing.
Michigan now to send this one away following the score. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Jaguars offense now heads back onto the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. But their hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Give him seven on the play, and it's a second down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to Talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. All right, Charles, let's switch gears to preseason injuries. Always a hot topic. Look at the Chargers. Two Achilles injuries out for the season. Both their tight end Jeff Cumberland and Brandon Oliver as well two key players for them and Brandon Oliver I mean he, he's a little rock when he runs the football and they're going to miss him both running it and in special teams and don't forget Benjamin Watson who went to the Ravens this year one of the better pickups for them he's out for the season after an Achilles I'm not a doctor I can't play one but I have heard doctors say the guys are getting bigger stronger faster the Achilles is, is really bearing up some pressure now just need you to be careful on the step master <laughs> we don't need you going down with the Kelly Andrews. I agree totally. I'll do my best. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. So possession goes over here on the punt. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Here's Wilson. It's complete to Lockett. And he's brought down after a good game. Rawls, the lone man in the backfield. Here's Wilson. Left side, it's complete. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Wilson again to Rawls. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It'll be a gain of five there as they move closer. It's second and goal. So they're on the five-yard line here, second down and goal. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Calling a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. So now third and goal. Will the defense bring some extra pressure here? Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. So Wilson will head to the sideline, and on comes Steven Hauschka for the field goal. This is less than an extra point, just a 19-yard attempt. 
A minute 59 to go in the first half. Back to Century Lake Field after this. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Larry Ridley is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over. You didn't right turn here. it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. Wow, now we got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something bad to be gained from it. Marquise Lee, the intended target, and that'll make it second and 10. And Charles switching gears for a second. Rosters trimmed to 75 as of 4 p.m. Tuesday. What are some of the early surprises you saw? Well, how about Paul Kruger, the outside linebacker in Cleveland? I thought he would adapt really well to their new system. He's gone. Ruben Randall, a wide receiver we thought had big value. He's gone from Philadelphia. And how about our guy, Terrence Knighton? Huh? The big fella. Gone from New England. What did, what did he put out on social media on the way out? He said, it's been real, New England. Call it a pickup of seven. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Portal's going to try and throw on third down. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. And there's a good opportunity. Just went awry there. A drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. Taken in at the 22. And we'll go as a 42, make it a 43-yard punt. Six on the return. So let's glance at a player's spotlight now with Russell Wilson. And he's been effective in their winning, so it makes it a little easier to put a montage together. It really does, doesn't it? Because we can see him throwing it really well. But how about everything else that's going on? Protection has been excellent. And, of course, the guys catching the ball have provided some highlight reels themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's not always just one man. He's been good, but you got the guys catching the ball, too. Yeah, you name it. It's all coming together for them. What they call that synergy, everything working together really well well and right now he's the focal point of it and on the outside they're playing press coverage rolls the lone man in the backfield now Wilson looking left side and it's complete Deep into Jacksonville territory. A big play there on the catch and run. 61 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. They'll hand to Rawls. And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the 8. A gain of 3, second down. And they're going to speed things up here. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. On second down, rolls. 
And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. They run with a power back. Rawls. And, he'll, and now the Jags defense deciding to call a timeout. He needed two. He got one. And that's going to leave him with fourth down of the yard. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. And Hauschka's kick is good. And the lead now increases to 20 to nothing. It's a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they get the field goal near the end of the first half to expand that lead. Yeah, that's got to feel good, but they can't let up. Now on the kickoff, they've got to make sure they don't give up a big return or big yardage to set up the other team for one last chance to score themselves. Now after the main field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. The drive begins with a run by Ivory. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Now we got now. Blue 45. Blue 45. On second down, here's Bortles. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. And now the Seahawks are going to call another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. Now Bortles. Underneath, Ivory. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with half time on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. On first and ten, here's Bortles. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Now hang on here. Timeout called. Timeout called by the defense. And with half time on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. A final shot before half for Bortles. He's going to walk one deep left side here. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So we are at halftime here in downtown Seattle with the Seahawks out in front as we send you cross country to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando with our halftime report. Here's Larry Ridley. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Moving now to late in the first. Here's the throw. is hurried and picked off. Sherman's in position, and he's the one who comes away with the ball. Now following the pick, the catch is made after a quick pass, and he'll take this all the way for a touchdown. Seahawks up by two touchdowns. Now first and ten. The quick pass, it's complete, and he'll end up picking up 28 yards on the play. Seahawks will settle for three points on the drive. In the second, Lockett's got the reception, and the pass and catch will end up going for 61 yards. Unfortunately, they would have to settle for just a field goal. So that's it for us at the EA Sports Studio. We'll go back now to Seattle for the start of the second half.
Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on Here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys. But be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So, Charles, while we have a moment getting late in the preseason, a lot of people point to week three as one to watch. What caught your eye in week three? Well, when I watched San Diego play, and saw Melvin Gordon. He looks like the Melvin Gordon we saw coming out of college. Another explosive run. He looks sharp. He looks quick. He looks much more confident and especially healthy after the offseason knee surgery. Teddy Bridgewater looked pretty good too, didn't he? And what I liked about him, and I agree with you totally, is the ability to push the ball downfield because that's what they plan to work on the entire offseason. In fact, that's all we've talked about. Can they get the ball vertically downfield to help out with Adrian Peterson in the backfield? And Teddy Bridgewater has made great strides in that area. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. And now they're in the hurry up. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. That is caught at the seven. And he's brought down after a good game. A really nice gain of 25 yards. down following that long game. The tenth carry for Thomas Rawls. So he got free of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. Only a yard that time, second and goal. And the offense moving quickly to the line. They go again with Rawls. And he will take this one in for the Seattle touchdown. Thomas Rawls, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. And that stretches the lead to 27. to send this one away following the score. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And time now for the Seahawk defense to take their spots again on the field. fake here on first down and there's a flag on the play holding offense from the 
the gun. It's Bortles. And that is, I think he caught it. He did, but they'll say out of bounds. It'll be incomplete. Well, we got a little lull here in the action. Week three of the preseason. I know you and I were talking about the Cincinnati-Jacksonville game. What'd you take away from that? Well, let's look at Cincinnati first. They went on the road, and all we've talked about the offseason was how they blew the Pittsburgh playoff game. And would there be a residual effect on this team? So far, like it. So far it doesn't look like it. They look pretty good. Looks like Marvin Lewis and Ford put that behind them. Let's move ahead to Jacksonville, though. They've been kind of the darlings of the offseason, haven't they? A great draft, great free agency. Many people think they can make a move in the AFC South. They didn't look like it in week three of the preseason, but they have plenty of talent there. I expect them to get better once the regular season kicks off. And guess what? They open up with Green Bay at home. Ooh, a chance to prove themselves early. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. They fake the handoff. Now Bortles. He's got time in the pocket. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good. But when you can couple that with contact on him, that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there. That's winning football. Here's Brad Nordman now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Now it's Lockett. Look at the spin. Pallets. He won't go down. Spinning again. He had one man to beat. It takes a touchdown saving tackle to bring him down. And the Seahawks will have great field position to start this drive. They take over on the short side of the field. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down to those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. It's a gain of 20 that time. And the Seahawks are going to have a first and goal. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. There's Wilson to throw. In zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Tyler Lockett with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Seahawks are running away with this one. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Here's Hauschka for the extra point. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. Send this one away following the score. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Going on first down is Bortles. Over the middle, the connection to Hearns. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. It'll go as a gain of 12. And it's good enough for a Jacksonville first. One thing I can say pretty safely, 
that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. On first down, this is Ivory. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Tough day. Tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Here we go now. Green, 90. Here's the option going right. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. And he'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. on third down but he's got it to Hearns and he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49 well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him show some confidence supreme confidence big time confidence that he would make the play for him and he did and a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Second down, Ivory, and he'll get it down on the plate of the 37. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and we'll still get the first down. They love being physical. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Here's a carry for a former starter. This is T.J. Yeldon, and he stopped immediately there. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. for his running back and he's got him call it a one yard gain on the play and that's going to make it third down and ten I know most of the time when the ball's in the air you're thinking wide receiver and tight end but running backs they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays they'll come out in the pistol from the gun on third down Bortles to the right side here the tight end Thomas he lost two, and it brings up four. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything, so it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Out of bounds as he appeared to be looking for the corner. He got it. They're going to mark this at the four-yard line.
The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he's brought down after a good game. Give him 30 yards there. And quickly, they get to the line. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Rolls the lone man in the backfield. Now Wilson. And a grab made by Doug Baldwin. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Now Wilson on first down. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first and 10, it's Wilson. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Play for Rawls. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Now the fourth-year man from Texas A&M, Kristen Michael. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Well, I'd say that run's pretty emblematic of what we've seen all day long. No matter what they've done on offense, this offensive line has controlled the line of scrimmage, giving them time to throw it, run it, do whatever they wanted. That's why their point's up on the board. And right now, the psyche of the offense... We're in control, and we can do whatever we feel like doing out here on the field. They give it to Rawls, and there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Now they'll throw it with Wilson, and this will be caught. And the carnage continues. It's another touchdown. Well, this game is definitely over, but we do know some people like to go ahead and continue to add to their score, don't we? Yeah, I, I don't know that they need to add any more right now, though. I'm just starting to think about those dinner plans tonight, my friend. Well, you and I will be thinking about dinner plans, but we also know they're playing people are thinking, how can I get some more scores for my fantasy, for other things? They're trying to figure that part out now. By the way, last weekend we went sushi because that's what you wanted. We're going steak tonight. I'm in. All right. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Now to send this one away following the score. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him. <laughs> and time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. And on that one, the protection just broke down. 
you've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep it. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumble. It's loose. And it's a Seattle Seahawks touchdown. Second time he's lost a fumble. This one hurts more. It's returned for six. He's been under a lot of duress, hasn't he? Pressured, hurried, harassed the whole game. Well, the offensive line not giving him a lot of help. Not a lot of help, but the bottom line, he's got to take care of the football. Now, how should get attack on the extra point? Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. Two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now out come the Jags. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Go, go. Green, hey, hey, hey. Green, On first and ten, here's Bortles. Caught out left side by Robinson. And he's brought down after a good game. 26 yards on the pick up there. And it'll give the Jags a first down. And this will probably be the last play they can squeeze in here before the two-minute warning. Defense always has to be careful in this situation. A lot of teams like to take a shot. On first down, Bortles. Lee's got it over the middle. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Time for a break. This one all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. So they complete the pass and now they face a second down. On second down, here's Bortles. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. On any passes in the middle of the field, anyone who's going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Throwing his Bortles on third down. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they have the football, and will take over at the 24-yard line. 
Well, you're trailing. It's the fourth quarter, and you've got to throw the football. But the defense knows this, too. So they're just going to sit back, bring in an extra defensive back or two, the old nickel or dime strategy, Brandon, and wait for you to put that bad boy up for grabs. And this one winds up being intercepted. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels because every team has a goal when they start the year to win at home. All right? And sometimes you don't win all of them, but they managed to get that done today. Just think about your routine stays the same. Everything's familiar. You feel right going into the game, and they translated that into a win. They did indeed. They protected the home field, and now the final stages. So they just got the football on an interception. They almost gave it right back the same way. And you know, when you look over to the bench after that type of a play, number one is pure relief. Didn't give it up. It's not the coach you're worried about yelling at you. It's these guys on defense who just intercepted the pass and want a break over there. Hey, take care of the football, man. They're going to hurry back to the line now. There's Wilson to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And he's brought down after a good game. They'll run with Rawls. Down right around the 25. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. They stay on the ground. Rawls again. And he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with it. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Four down, four down. Wilson wants to throw it. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. And to me, that touchdown allows you to start grinning widely on your sideline. I think they pretty much locked this one away. Yeah, that's the clincher, the proverbial icing on the cake, if you will. Hauschka now for the extra point. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. in this relay following the score. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because... There are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now, and if they call plays they want executed, they need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. Can you do any more work or make it more dramatic for not much game than what we just saw there? Did you see how his toes got down? Tip-tap, tip-tap, got him down. What did he get out of it? He sold the sizzle. He just had no stake. <laughs> I mean, was it one yard? Yeah, you plays like that, you at least expect a first down there, just one yard. Give him six on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. 
Looked like a pretty good, safe play right there. No, he's had trouble with the interceptions in this game there. Hits his guy out in the flat. Yeah, so many times we hear quarterbacks and offensive coordinators talk about in your progressions, you're either throwing the touchdown or you're throwing the check down. But earlier in the game, it was touchdown or interception. Now he got to the check down. And, and he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Brandon Browner. And a great return as he takes this up just shy of the 45. Brandon, offensively, this has been a tough day for him. Trying to find a place to throw the football. It's been extremely difficult. I've got to give a lot of credit to the secondary, especially the corners. They've had the receivers on lockdown. Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down. And a heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. And some room to work. Picked off by Tashawn Gibson. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So a pick six there out of the nickel package. They went with five DBs. Almost becoming the base package in the NFL is the nickel. Hard to throw against. That was demonstrated one more time. A pick six going the other way. And they make the score a little bit more respectable here in our final quarter of play. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Tyler Lockett now with a return. Oh, nice move. <laughs> Turn here, he gets it out to the 25 yard line. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Defensively, there's still three timeouts. I, do you even need to use them at this point? I think a lot of coaches do it anyway, and it seems like cosmetics to us. Does it does just send a message you're not quitting? Send a message that you're not quitting. Let your team know you're going to battle all the way. And you're always hoping for that ultimate miracle that something will happen. You'll pick up the ball and score, and you'll have a chance one more time than maybe on an onside kick, but not likely. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And this is one of those trials as broadcasters we dread a little bit. We had to go deep into the stat sheets and notebooks to find stuff to talk about. I hope you didn't notice, but I was stealing your notes as the game went along. I was like, Brandon, who was ready to go, plenty of information. I started stealing from page 15 and 16 before you even looked down. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long.